Hi everyone, it's Lara here from LK Yoga and today I'll be taking you through our Warrior 2 Beginner Sequence. So we're going to start class today at the bottom of our mats in Child's Pose. I'm going to try a wide kneed Child's Pose. So we're going to take the knees nice and wide, lift the chest up high and then just gently fold forward. So you're going to walk the hands out in front of you, spread the fingers nice and wide and then just gently take the forehead to rest on the mat in front of you if that feels comfortable. From here, just taking a moment to settle into the breath. So if you can, inhaling and exhaling nice and deeply. As you inhale, just feeling the breath fill the back of the body. So the shoulder blades lift and move apart with the inhale. And as you exhale, just trying to sink back over the heels. Letting go of any unnecessary tension you might find through the body. And just taking the next 45 minutes, just to let go of your day. And just take the time for you and your practice on your mat. So from here we're going to come into a first needle variation. So we're going to stay in child's pose. In the inhale, we're going to lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. Lifting the chest up towards the top of the room. And then as we exhale, we're going to take the arm underneath us and just threading it through so that your left ear comes down towards the mat. And if you want to intensify this stretch, we're just going to walk the right fingers over towards the left. So the right arm is arcing all the way over the top of the head towards the left side of the mat. So you should feel an opening down the right hand side of the body, which is on the top. And then on the bottom underneath you, the left arm sort of stretching out through the shoulder here. Just breathing deeply still. And then slowly walking the right hand back over. And then taking the left arm back towards the ceiling and placing it back on the mat. From here, coming to the other side on the inhale, lifting the right arm nice and high. And then threading it through underneath you. So we're finding our child's pose, thread the needle variation on the other side. Again, you've got the option just to walk the left fingertips over towards the right. So we get the stretch all the way across the top side of the body and a stretch across the shoulder on the right side underneath. Breathing as deeply as you can in this position. On the inhale, just letting the belly expand between the legs. And then drawing the left hand back over, taking the right arm back up towards the ceiling and then placing it on the mat in front of you. From here, finding our way to tabletop. So we want the hands to be roughly underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. I take a few rounds of cat-cow, so on the inhale, rounding up through the back. And then on the exhale, gently drawing the shoulder blades down and gazing towards the top of the mat. So just in your own time with the breath, moving between these two spine positions. So rounding as much as you can. And then on the exhale, coming through, and trying to pause, create as much of a valley as you can between these two positions, moving at any pace that works for you. And try to make the movement as fluid as you can. And then slowly coming back to a neutral position here, we're going to return to our thread the needle just to see how the sort of opening through the hips created by being in tabletop changes the pose for you. So on the inhale, this time lifting the left arm back towards the ceiling. Then on the exhale, threading the arm through one more time so the left ear comes down to the mat. Remember in this variation, there's an option to tuck the toes on the right foot, that's the opposite leg, and just gently press the heel away as well. So give you a bit of a stretch through the right leg if that feels good. If you'd rather keep the knee down too, that's fine. And then gently drawing the right knee down. Extending the left arm back up towards the ceiling and placing it back on the mat. Coming over to the right side this time, inhaling, lifting the right arm high. And then taking the arm underneath you, drawing the shoulder to the mat. Remember, option to tuck the toes on the left foot as well, just gently pressing the heel away here. Just breathing deeply, trying to relax any tension you might find in the neck and the shoulder here. And then gently taking the left knee down. Extending the right arm back up towards the ceiling and placing it back on the mat. Just making sure you feel nice and even and balanced. And then we're going to lift the left leg and just start to do some real knee circles here. So 
So keeping the core engaged, belly button towards the spine. Just starting with some little circles and slowly we're gonna draw these circles bigger and bigger. So eventually we want the heel to come towards the bum and the knee all the way over towards the elbow. So drawing a nice big circle with the tip of the knee here. And when you're ready, just reversing the direction. So staying on the same side, still drawing the circles nice and big. And then slowly starting to make them smaller and then setting the knee back down. So come over to the right side and then start to draw some circles there. And slowly making them bigger as we did on the left side. So we just start to draw the heel towards the bum and the knee towards the elbow, just drawing a really big circle. If you get any popping, that's perfectly fine as long as it's not accompanied with pain. Just means we need to move our joints a little bit more. And then reversing the direction. Having said that, I always get a little bit of a crunch, so it's just part of the way our bodies work. And then gently setting the knee back down. From here, coming to our first downward facing dog. So spreading the fingers wide, tucking the toes underneath you, and lifting the bum up towards the sky. So we're gonna keep a deep bend in the knees for now, and start to pedal through the feet. So taking one foot down, then the other. Maybe giving the hips a bit of a twist. Whatever works for you. It's getting some movement going through the body. We're trying to keep the neck nice and long in line with the spine. So your ears should be sort of between the elbows here, in line with your biceps. Gazing towards the centre and the back of your mat, somewhere around there, not looking at the hands or up at the groin. And then slowly walking the feet in towards the hands and we come to our rag doll. So our first forward fold, nicely bend in the knees. Hands take opposite elbows, just letting the head relax down. Finding length through the spine and just letting gravity draw the upper body down here. Relaxing the muscles in the face. Then on the inhale, taking the hands down towards the toes. Rolling up through the spine, stacking the shoulders. Circling the arms nice and wide, taking up overhead. Drawing the hands into prayer and exhaling, folding all the way back down. On the inhale, finding a halfway lift, straining out through the back. Then on the exhale, folding back down. Rolling up through the spine one more time, straightening up, lifting, circling the arms, drawing the hands into prayer and exhaling, folding down. On the inhale, finding your halfway lift. And then from here, folding back down. This time we're going to take the left foot behind us and we're going to twist to face the side of the mat. So we're coming to a wide angle forward fold here. So if you can't quite reach the mat, that's fine. You can take your hands to a block instead. So we're going to try and keep the legs reasonably straight, just a slight bend in the knees here. And we're going to keep the back lovely and long. We're going to keep the belly button drawn in towards the spine and draw the shoulders back and away from the ears. So we're going to feel some engagement in the lats here. So that's the muscles in the back. You're going to breathe and press the weight evenly through the feet through the balls of the toes, the heels, and try to create an, a lift in the inner arch. And then from here, we're gonna find our way into a goddess squat. So we're gonna walk the feet in, so we're gonna stay wider than the hips here, and the feet are gonna turn out to 45 degrees. We're gonna engage through the core, take the arms up overhead, and sink down. So we want the knees to track over the feet as best we can. Keep the chest lifted, we're gonna try and engage through the shoulders, inner elbows facing towards you. So it's quite an active pose, just letting the bum sink down, trying to breathe deeply still, taking the hands to prayer and then folding back down. So in this forward fold, we're not going to walk the feet too far out this time. We're going to press the hips back and lift them up at the same time. So we're driving the hips back and up slightly. So finding more length through the back of the legs. We're going to come back into goddess God squat one more time. So you're going to turn the feet out slightly. And we're going to draw strength into the core, take the arms up overhead and sink down. So we're trying to keep the torso as upright as we can, keeping the chest slightly lifted. Fingers are nice and active. Try to smile if you can. Breathing deep, can you sink any lower? And then taking the hands to prayer this time as we straighten up, we're going to find our way to warrior two. 
So you're going to take the right foot to face forward and the left foot's going to become parallel with the short edge of the mat here. So using the centre line on your mat, you want the front heel to be running on the centre line and the back foot to be with the inner arch just crossing over that centre line. So we're going to gaze out over the hand, front hand here. We're going to roll the shoulders up, back and down and make sure they're nice and relaxed. We want the shoulders to stay above the hips as best we can. I'm going to sink into the bend of the front knee. One more deep breath here. Really sink on the exhale. And then taking the hands to frame the feet, we come back to a plank position. I'm going to broaden through the back. So keep the bum down, but press the shoulders up towards the sky, getting a doming sensation there. Pressing through the heels and then gently lowering the knees down taking the chest all the way to the floor. I'm going to take the hands wide, so the thumbs sit just under the shoulders. On the inhale, we're going to lift a cobra, lifting the chest up and gazing forward, gently pressing with the hands. The lift comes from the upper body as best we can, and exhaling, lowering down, just gently giving the hips a wiggle, and then raising one more time, inhaling, lifting, and then exhaling, lowering back down. Final time, if you want to find a bit more height that feels good for you, please do. So inhaling, lifting. And then exhaling, lowering down. And pressing your way back to child's pose. And then coming back to downward facing dog. So we start to get a little bit warmer. We're maybe pressing the heels down a little bit more actively, still keeping a bend in the knees lifting the hips high, just trying to find a little bit more length through the legs, but focusing on keeping the back nice and straight. There's a slight bend in our arms to draw strength into the upper body, and the inner elbows twist in slightly to face each other. From here, we walk the feet towards the hands one more time, finding a forward fold. So remember, in our forward fold, we can take the hands to the block at any height of the block. So you can even have it on the lower setting. Or if you feel quite comfortable in the forward fold, you can perhaps take the fingers to rest underneath the toes and just draw the forehead in to meet the knees. So you're really trying to lift the bum up towards the ceiling, really get a nice deep stretch through the back of the hamstrings here. That's the back of the legs. Lovely, well done. Now we're just going to release the hands here, take the block slightly away. On the inhale, we roll up through the spine, stack the shoulders, Circle the arms nice and wide, draw the hands into prayer, and exhale, fold all the way back down. On the inhale, find a halfway lift, and then on the exhale, lowering back down. So we're going to step the left foot back again. Here you can step the right foot back if you want to change sides. As we're coming into a symmetrical pose, it doesn't matter too much. We're going to keep the chest lifted. If you can, keep the hands on the mat, then that's fine. If not, remember, you can always use a block or just starting to lift the hands up slightly. We're gonna keep the back straight. This time we're gonna take a twist. So we're gonna take the right hand to either the center of our block or to the center of your mat. We're gonna lift the left arm up towards the sky and try and twist the chest up to follow. Breathing deeply. And then taking the left hand back down, replacing it on the mat and this time, I'm sorry, switching over so the left hand replaces the right. And this time the right arm comes up, twisting the right, um, the right hand high and trying to let the chest follow. One more breath. And as you exhale, taking the right hand back down. From here we're going to find goddess squat just one more time, walking the feet in. We're going to take the toes to face out, engaging through the core, sweeping the arms up overhead and sinking the bottom down. Really um, engaging the fingers, we're going to make them Lift and energize energy through the body. Try to come onto the tiptoes if you can, a little extra challenge. Sink the bum down a bit further if possible. And then taking the heels down, drawing the hands to prayer and standing up. So we're coming to warrior two on the other side. So we let the left foot twist to face perhaps the back or the front of the mat, depending on which foot you step back, doesn't matter. As long as the left foot is on the center line, the right foot is parallel with the back edge of the mat. So you want the inner arch of the, of the back foot to align with the heel of the front foot. Coming into our warrior two one more time, sinking down, trying to keep the shoulders in line with the hips and gazing out over the front hand. 
Breathing deeply, sinking as much as you can into the pose for one more breath. And then this time taking the hands to frame the foot. I'm going to step back into a plank position. We're going to try and dome through the back one more time. So imagining someone's got their, finger blade, their fingers between your shoulder blades and pressing them away. I was trying to keep the bum down as best you can and the belly button drawn towards the spine. Pressing the heels away and then gently lowering the knees down. Chest comes all the way to the floor. Hands in line with the shoulders, inhaling, gently lifting to cobra. And as we exhale this time, we're going to find our way back to child's pose. So we're going to draw ourselves back. This time perhaps taking the knees together if that feels comfortable for you. Although yogi's choice here. So if the knees are together, just letting the upper thighs support the chest. Trying to breathe nice and deeply, coming back to the breath. So as you inhale, remembering to feel the shoulder blades move apart. The rib cage expands to accommodate the breath. And then as we exhale, we just sink and relax. We're going to walk the hands over towards the left, stretching out down the right hand side of the body. Breathing deeply here, just letting the head sink down. Seeing if you can walk the right fingertips just that little bit further over. And then coming back through center and over to the other side. So stretching out on the left hand side of the body this time. Breathing deeply and sinking, trying to keep the left hip grounded. And then coming back towards center. I'm going to press up into our downward facing dog here. Lifting the hips nice and high. And just breathing deeply. Inhaling and lifting the hips up and exhaling, just gently pressing the heels down. Don't worry if they don't touch the mat. And then on the inhale this time, we're gonna lift the left leg up high towards the sky. We've got an option to bend and open through the top leg. So we're gonna take the heel down towards the bum and lift the left knee up towards the sky. Trying to keep the front and the chest facing down so we're not twisting and opening through the upper body here. That stays facing the mat. Stepping the left foot through to the top of the mat. And then finding our way back to warrior two. Gazing out over the front hand, sinking deep into the legs. This time we'll reverse the warrior. So we're going to turn the palm to face up on the front hand. We're going to lean forward and then take the left arm up and over. The right arm just rests gently on the back leg, keeping the toes on the front foot relaxed. And then coming to extended side angle, taking the right arm up overhead, reaching out through the fingertips. The left arm is only gently resting on the front leg. Trying to almost scoop the chest through to the ceiling and pressing through the outside edge of the back foot. Coming back into warrior two. And from here coming to triangle. So we're gonna shorten the stance by about a foot so our legs are still facing the same way with the right foot parallel with the short edge of the mat and the left foot facing forward. We just shorten the stance so both legs are straight. Taking the arms back out and then from here we're going to start to reach forward, extending through the torso and then folding, trying to keep the shoulders in line and the hips in line here. So imagine you're between two planes of glass, you're not leaning forward or back. If you can, gazing up towards the top hand, but if it's more comfortable, just gazing towards the bottom hand. The front arm just rests gently against the front leg in triangle. Or you can take the hand to a block or hold on to the leg if that's more comfortable for you. Just one more breath here, really feeling the extension through the outside of the right hip. And then coming back to warrior two. Great work. Hands frame the front foot here. Stepping back to a plank position and taking a vinyasa. Lowering the knees down, chest comes to the floor, hands in line with the shoulders, inhaling, lifting to cobra, and exhaling, lowering down, and pressing your way back to downward facing dog. Lifting the hips high, and taking a breath here for a moment. Remember that any time you want to return to child's pose and rest there, feel free to do so. On the next inhale, lifting the right leg high, Option to bend and open through the top leg so the heel comes down towards the bum and the knee up towards the ceiling. Trying to keep the torso level so we're not twisting and opening around the right shoulder. 
and then stepping the right foot through to the top of the mat, finding our warrior two on the other side. Using our open the front hand, and then as we did on the other side, we're going to open up, so we're going to lean forward, turn the front palm, and reverse the warrior, creating length through the right hand side of the body, lifting the chest to the ceiling. And then from here, finding the extended side angle, taking the left arm up overhead. We're still trying to sink into the bend in the front leg, drawing strength into that right leg. And the right arm only gently rests. So it's a really active pose, reaching out through the fingertips, pressing through the outside edge of the back foot. Coming back to our warrior two. And then finding our triangle pose. So again, the back foot comes in about a foot. And we fold over the front leg, gazing up towards the top hand if we can, or perhaps down to the bottom foot, that's fine as well. You're trying to stay with the breath as best you can. And remember, you can always take a block here to rest the bottom hand on, or rest the hand on the leg if that's more comfortable for you. Final breath here. And then coming back into our warrior two, gazing out over the front hand one more time. And then taking the hands to frame the front foot. And again, taking our modified vinyasa, lowering the knees down, chest comes all the way to the floor. Hands in line with the shoulders, inhaling, gently lifting to cobra. And as we exhale, lowering down. And finding our way back to child's pose this time. So drawing the knees underneath us and just briefly resting the forehead on the mat. And if it feels comfortable for you, we're just going to let the arms come behind us. I'm just going to relax the shoulders down, fingertips face up. Just a breath or two here, drawing yourself back to the mat and back to a nice, even rhythm in the breath. And then slowly walking yourself up to knee line. I'm just going to take the hands behind us. Remember, you can sit on the block here like we did last week. I'm going to squeeze the shoulders together and lift the chest. So just a gentle opening and then releasing the hands, sitting tall and coming into one round of camel. So we're going to tuck the toes, standing on our knees, pressing the hips forward and we're going to lift the chest as we come up. We're going to take the hands to the lower back, squeezing the elbows behind us, breathing deeply and if it feels comfortable letting the head back or just gently gazing towards the ceiling. Great work. And then drawing the belly in strong, coming back up to centre, coming back down to kneeling and into our child's pose one more time. Breathing deeply and then finding your way back to downward facing dog for our final flow. So we're going to tuck the toes and lift the hips behind us. Just gently tucking the toes in if you can. So maybe shortening the stance just ever so slightly to get a little bit deeper now we're warm through the backs of the legs. So a slight bend in the knees as much as needed to keep the hips lifting high. On the inhale, we're going to lift the left leg behind us. Option to bend and open again, taking the knee up towards the ceiling. From here, drawing the knee in towards the chest and stepping towards the top of the mat. Turning the back foot and coming back to warrior two. Trying to keep the shoulders above the hips, gazing forward. Turning the front palm and reversing the warrior, taking the left arm up overhead. And then exhaling, coming forward to extended side angle, reaching the right fingertips all the way out overhead here. This time we've got an option to try a half bind. So we're going to take the right arm behind the back and interlace the fingers through to the inside of the hip. So as I just did, it can be nice just to lift the torso to accommodate putting the hand in. We're trying to draw the right shoulder back here. So we're getting a nice opening through the inside of the top shoulder. Still trying to sink into the legs as best we can and gazing up towards the ceiling if that feels comfortable for you. Then gently releasing the hand, taking it back overhead. Coming into warrior two one more time. And this time as the hands frame the feet, you're going to step straight back to downward facing dog. Nice deep breath in downward facing dog. And then coming over to the other side. So on the inhale, we're going to lift the right leg high. Option to bend and open, taking the knee towards the sky and the heel towards the bum. Stepping the right foot through to the top of the mat, finding warrior two on the other side. 
gazing out through over the front fingers here. Turning the front palm and reversing the warrior. And then right arm comes down into extended side angle, left arm comes up overhead. And then like we did on the other side, perhaps finding the bind. So we're going to take the left arm behind the back, lift up slightly just to allow the hand to come into the inside of the front hip. Trying to draw the left shoulder back and gazing up towards the ceiling, if that feels good for you. Sinking into the legs as best you can. Breathing deeply. And then taking the left arm back overhead here. Finding your way into warrior two one more time. Taking the hands to frame the front foot, stepping back to a plank, briefly holding if you can. Gently lowering the knees down and tucking the toes all the way down to the ground we go. Hands in line with the shoulders, inhaling, lifting to cobra. And exhaling, lowering back down. And finding your way back to child's pose. Reconnecting with the breath in child's pose. You can inhaling and exhaling through the nose, cultivating, cultivating our ujjayi breath. And just breathing in any way that's comfortable for you and allows you to make the most out of each breath. From here, coming back to downward facing dog, don't worry, nearly done with the hard stuff. From here, we're going to find our way to Malasana, our yogi squat. So we're going to walk the feet to the outside of the hands and then if we can take them nice and wide, toes can point out slightly, then we're going to draw the bum down, take the hands to prayer in front of us. We're going to try and keep the back lovely and straight here, lifting the chest up and through, trying to keep the torso upright. If this feels too much, you can jump on a block, so I'll just twist and face forward to demonstrate the other variations of the pose. So we can sit on a block and lift the chest. We can come back to our goddess pose as well, just trying to sink a little bit deeper this time. So ideally we want to stay on our malasana just for one more breath, keeping the chest lifted up. And then from here we're going to take the hands down and straighten through the legs. So I'm just going to come to the back of the, um, the top of the mat again, so I'm with you all. And then from here walking the feet in, lifting halfway on the inhale, and then exhaling coming back down. From here we're going to find our way to seated or if you want you can lower the bum down and gently rock back. It's a nice little transition for you there. Taking yourself to the centre of the mat here, just a tiny weeny bit of core work to go. So to take the hands to face up and find our boat pose. So we want our back to be lovely and straight and we're going to lift the chest through, keeping the hands facing upright. And from here we're going to lift the shins to be parallel with the mat. And then we're going to lower halfway if we can. So holding our low bow position just briefly. And then drawing ourselves back in. Just squeezing ourselves in. Sitting up nice and straight in our little rest. Breathing deep. Just one more to go. Taking any version that works for you. So we're going to take the hands to face up one more time. We're going to lift the shins parallel. Try and draw the chest through. Maybe coming halfway down and briefly holding there. Perhaps giving the legs a kick if you're feeling brave. And then from here, coming back up and just squeezing the legs in one more time. Well done. And we come into bound angle pose here, which is a nice hip opener. We're going to keep the chest lifted. We're going to create a sort of star shape, a kind of squashed, sort of a squashed diamond shape even with our legs. We're going to lift chest. And then exhale, fold forward, maybe walking the hands out in front of you as you round, if that feels good. Or maybe taking the hands to rest on the insides of the feet. And maybe using the elbows just to press the legs a little bit further down to make the pose a bit more active. So your choice here, either pressing down, keeping the hands on the feet, or maybe extending them out in front and then just rounding the head down. Breathing deeply, sinking into the hips. Great work. All the hard work's done now. Just a few nice deep stretches for you to enjoy. And from here, we're going to slowly walk the hands back in. 
I'm going to take the legs wide into a wide angle forward fold. So for this pose, I generally sit on a block because I find it a little bit easier to access that way. So I'm going to turn to face you and I'm going to sit on a block. You can just sit on the mat. Coming back to the centre of my mat, extending the legs out to either side as wide as feels comfortable. We're not trying to create any groin injuries here. I'm going to take the arms up overhead on the inhale. And as we exhale, gently folding forward. So you're going to walk the hands out in front of you and sink the chest down as much as you can. You want to keep the back relatively straight, unless you'd rather round through the spine and come a bit deeper. This depends on how you want to take the pose. So just doing what works for you today. Just breathing deeply and just see if you can walk the fingers out with each exhale here. And then from here we're going to come towards the left leg. Then going to walk the hands over towards the left. Maybe lift up slightly, straighten the back one more time. And then we're going to fold over the left leg. So you can continue just walking the hands out on either side of the left leg. Or if you want, you can take the right hand that's on the inside over to the outside of the leg and just rest it there to get a bit of a stretch down the right side of the back as well. You can also take the hands to catch onto the outside of the foot. So just twisting and gazing towards the foot, breathing deep here. And then just gently releasing the foot, walking ourselves over towards the right this time. So again, maybe lifting the chest slightly, straightening up over the right leg and then walking the hands down. And take the left hand if you'd like to the outside of the right leg. Maybe catching hold of the outside of the toes if that's available for you, but not necessary. Just holding on to something so we can get a bit of a stretch down the left hand side of the body. Just breathing deeply. And sinking into the stretch as best you can. And then slowly walking your way back to centre. Well done. Maybe taking the hands underneath the knees just to draw them in. If you're on a block, just removing that now. So we're going to come to a little inversion here. So you've got an option to try shoulder stand. Generally, I wouldn't advise coming into this unless you've practiced it before. Um, and so I will give you another option as well, which is going to be an equivalent to legs up against the wall, but something you can just do on your mat um, without requiring any additional props. So for shoulder stand, if you'd like to give it a go, we can come to lie on our backs and spread the shoulders nice and wide. Take the hands down either side of the mat. You can hold on to it first if you'd like. And then we're going to draw the knees in up over the head. If this feels enough, just take the hands to the lower back and stay here. If you feel quite comfortable, you can try walking the hands a little bit higher up the back and extending the legs up overhead. So this is our shoulder stand position. You can have a play with the leg position as well if you're feeling comfortable here. Maybe drawing the knees out maybe taking the legs out towards the sides or some split variations that's up to you the other pose that you can try instead is just gently holding the backs of the legs so this is a bit like being with your legs up against the wall you can press the heels up to get a little bit of extra extension through the legs so you still get the benefit of an inversion just a little bit more gentle and relaxed if that suits you if you're in shoulder stand and want to come out and all we're going to do is gently draw the knees in and then lower ourselves all the way down to the mat. So we can meet in this position here on the floor, have our legs up against the wall variation. So this is a lovely pose to do against the wall to fully relax. We let the hands come down either side of the body, but just for now, in this slightly shorter class, we're just going to keep the legs up and just use the hands to support them there. Just another breath here. And we're just going to draw the knees in and just squeeze them in towards the chest. Maybe give the toes a little bit of wiggle, getting the blood flowing back through the legs. And do some little hip circles here. And I generally, knee circles even, sorry. 
<laughs> I generally like to keep the knees going on a very little circle, so one knee's going clockwise, the other anti-clockwise, but if you want to keep them together, that's fine as well. And then reverse the other direction. Lovely, well done. And I'm going to draw the knees back to centre and just gently rock our way back to seated or however you'd like to get up. Just a couple of poses left to go. So we're coming to a seated twist now. So we're going to take the left leg underneath us and the right leg on top. I'm going to lift the chest nice and high and then take the left hand around the outside of the right knee and then twist and gaze over the right shoulder. If you'd like to come a little bit deeper, then you can take the left elbow to sit on the outside edge of the right knee as well. You twist and gaze over the right shoulder like that. If you come into either pose, you want to try and keep the chest nice and lifted and the spine long. So if you find changing and using the elbow instead of holding the leg means you round through the back, maybe just stick with the other pose for now. And then slowly coming back towards centre and just switching over sides. So we're going to take the right leg underneath us and the left leg on top. And then taking the right hand around the outside of the left leg, inhaling growing tall and gazing over the left shoulder. Remember, we have got the modification of taking the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. If you're doing this, make sure you still feel long in the spine. And we come back to the other variation. Personally, I think this works better for me. Just breathing deeply. And then slowly coming back towards centre. From here, taking the legs out in front of you, coming into a forward fold. So again, I always like to do these poses on a block. That's just my personal preference. You can stay seated on the mat. If you'd like to sit on the block, just sitting right to the back of the block. Sending the legs out in front of you, just giving them a little wiggle, making sure they're nice and relaxed. Taking the arms up overhead. Then exhaling, folding forward, trying to keep the chest lifting through at first, keeping the back long. And then if you'd like to round, then you're just going to Find your way all the way down, drawing the forehead to meet your knees. Breathing deeply, sinking into the pose as best you can. Well done for staying with your practice today. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit looser in the body, a little calmer in the mind. Hopefully somewhat energised. Yoga has this amazing way of Helping us convert our tiredness, our lethargy, our stiffness into a nice, calm, and vibrant energy. And then slowly walking yourself back up towards centre and removing the block from underneath you. We're going to come into our reclined pigeon. So we're going to lie on the back. And then we're going to take the left foot to rest on the back of the right knee. We're going to thread the hands through and either hold onto the back of the hamstring perhaps the front of the shin. Generally I say just hold on to the hamstring, try and keep the shoulders broad and just squeeze the right leg in towards you to intensify the stretch. You can hold on to the front of the shin if you can still keep your shoulders on the mat. We want to keep the upper body relaxed here and breathe deeply. If you want to give the feet a little bit of a circle and a wiggle, feel free to do so, get some movement through the ankles. And we keep everything relaxed now. Reversing the direction if you're surfing the feet. And then coming to the other side, so just releasing the left leg, and this time taking the right foot to rest on the back of the left knee. And again, threading the hands through to rest on the back of the hamstring, or maybe all the way through to the front of the shin. Just kind of keep trying to keep the shoulders nice and relaxed, drawing down towards the mat. Really squeezing the left knee in here. Again, maybe doing some little circles with the feet. Or just the wiggling the toes, whatever works for you. Maybe keeping the feet still. Recircling the feet, just reversing the direction now. And then gently releasing the legs, 
From here coming into a full body stretch, so we're going to interlace the hands, take them up overhead, extending the legs out as well, inhaling, taking a nice deep breath, pressing the palms away, pressing the heels away. And then as you exhale, just letting the arms come down the sides of the body, palms face up and just relaxing for a moment here. Letting the shoulders be broad. Just taking a moment to absorb the practice. The final thing we're going to do in class today is some reclined twists. So we're just going to scooch our way over to the left hand side of the mat. It's my favourite way to finish class. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. I'm going to draw it over across the body. If you've got space, extending the left arm out towards the side, or maybe keeping the arm bent with the hand facing up if that works for you. Deep stretch down the left hand side of the body. And then slowly coming back towards centre. And over to the other side, so just wiggling your way over. Left leg comes down, right knee comes to the chest. Left hand comes to the outside of the right knee, drawing it across the body. And right arm comes out to the side if you have room. Maybe bending the arm if that works as well. Trying to keep the shoulders on the mat if you can here. And then slowly coming back towards centre. And coming to lie on the mat just for one more moment. If you have time to take a longer shavasana, then please do. Just give the video a pause. Maybe put on one of your favourite relaxing songs. And just chill out here for a bit. If you've got the rest of your day to get on with. Or dinner to cook. Giving the fingers and the toes a little wiggle. Drawing life back into the body. And then when you're ready, just rolling over to one side and just taking a moment to rest there. Slowly finding your way back up to seated. Crossing the legs underneath you, walking left and right on the sit bones, growing tall through the spine, rolling the shoulders up, back and down. Taking a deep inhale, drawing the hands to prayer, lifting the chest. And on the exhale, bowing the head. Namaste.